All right, we're here outside the National Weather Service office in Slidell with Ben Schott, he's a meteorologist in charge. And for all of southeast Louisiana, comparing 48 hours ago to where we were uh, in the cone to where we are now, it's now, correct me if I'm wrong, only a tiny sliver of southeast Louisiana in the cone, correct? Yeah, it is. Uh, we've had a drastic change in the way that uh, Sally is uh, tracking across the Gulf. And now, uh, for the betterment of this area, uh, the unfortunate uh, you know, result will, will be over in Alabama and Mississippi. But for us here in, in southeast Louisiana, uh, there'll be minor impacts over just a very small area. Is it possible that the storm could track back west a little bit, or is that unlikely at this point? It's pretty unlikely. Uh, you know, most of the uh, modeling that we see right now is showing that uh, easterly turn. Uh, you know, I will still say that, though, if you are uh, in St. Tammany Parish or in St. Bernard Parish, uh, you may want to obviously keep an eye on this just in case that uh, there is a little bit of wobble to the west, which a lot of these storms can do when they are continuing to intensify, which Sally is. But a major jog to the west you would say is unlikely, correct? Very unlikely at this point. Um, is the real problem with this storm how slow moving it is? And I'm guessing that's that's what's so frustrating. You just want to get it up and get it over with, right? Yeah, that, I mean, you, usually at times when you have uh, storms moving across the Gulf, they're moving at 10, 15 uh, miles per hour or more. And so uh, you get them uh, the come through in a day and then they're out of the area. Uh, this is one that we're going to be dealing with uh, floating around the uh, northern Gulf roughly for the next uh, 36 to 48 hours. And I'm guessing that is what causes the most problematic water effects, just the, the amount of rain being dumped, right? Yeah, wherever uh, the heaviest amount falls, which could be in excess of two feet, uh, the amount of flooding is going to be immense. Uh, on top of if it's close to the coast as well, uh, you're going to have the surge. So those two things impacting an area could be devastating, uh, definitely life-threatening. Uh, the other thing with the slow-moving storm, uh, that also helps with the storm surge. So when a storm slows down like this one is doing, uh, it's able to really build up that water and then work its way inland once it does come on shore. Do you know storm surge timing yet, when it will be in, and then more importantly, when it will be back out? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is it's happening right now. Uh, if you look at uh, Shell Beach or other gauges anywhere along the northern coast uh, right now of the Gulf, you will see that rise. Now, some of that is attributed to the high tide that we saw this afternoon. But there, there is actually surge starting to creep up as we speak, and that's not unusual with the storm that's just to the south now. So if you think about the winds uh, wrapping around uh, the circulation there, it's pushing uh, you know, from the south to the north on shore. So that will continue on over the course of the next uh, 36, 48 hours until it gets well inland, and then you'll see the flow return and push the water back out. Now, and going back to the rain, all of the real problematic rain, if I understand it correctly, is on the eastern side of this storm. So southeast Louisiana on the western side of the storm, um, we're on the much better side, correct? Yeah, that, that's definitely correct. Uh, you know, there will be still some bands that may come in as it does approach a little bit closer to the mouth before it makes that full turn to the north and to the east. So there may be still some rain tomorrow. So it's not like we're going to be completely dry. But the rainfall amounts that we were projecting uh, just a couple of days ago when the track was west of the mouth, we're just not going to realize those. And folks in Mississippi and Alabama, uh, those, those are the ones that may be measuring rainfall and feed over the course of the next couple of days. Yeah, and we certainly feel for all those people. That's Ben Schott as a meteorologist in charge here at the National Weather Service office in Slidell. Let's send it back to you guys.